Since you have been working hard, you know, with the combination of linear programming and solving systems of three equations and three variables, so today we get to take a step back and just relax a little bit. So um, the stuff that I'm going to show you is probably going to be new. Maybe most of you haven't done much with matrices, but it's still it's fairly simple, and I think you will enjoy it. So let's start off with some vocabulary. So a matrix is simply a rectangular array of numbers in rows of columns, and we use it just to help us organize um, data information. And a couple of things you need to know is how you define the dimensions of a matrix. So a matrix is always, you always count the number of rows and the number of columns, and it always goes rows first, and then columns. So on this particular matrix that I have down here, A, it has two rows and it has three columns. So the dimensions of that matrix then are two by three. And a lot of times, since the name of this matrix is A, you'll see um, an uppercase letter A and then you'll see a subscript of the dimensions, two by three. So then you know it has two rows and three columns. So it always goes rows by columns. Okay? The elements are each of the separate numbers, like this is an element, and the element there is in row one, column one. The six is in row two, column two. The five is in row one, column three. Okay? Let's take a look add um, some simple math that we use when we um, want to add or subtract matrices. You can only add or subtract matrices with the same dimensions. So um, if you were to slide one matrix on top of the other one, they'd have to match up. If that doesn't occur, then you can't add those two together. So in this first example, our first matrix, we have two rows and two columns. So it is a two by two matrix. And then the one we want to add to it also has two rows and two columns. So if I'd slide one on top of the other one, all of the elements would match up. And so we can therefore add those two together. And when we add them together, we end up with another two by two matrix. And all we do is simply add the corresponding elements. So we would take the three plus negative one, and both of those elements are in the first row, first column. So when we add them together, our sum goes in the first row, first column. So we would get 2. Okay, And then we would take the 0 plus the 4, add those together, and it would go where those elements were, which is in the first row, second column. Okay, Let's go with the negative 3 plus 6, so that will give us a 3. And then I'll have to go back to the blue, and then 5 plus 2 is 7. All right. In the second example, the dimensions, if we look at the dimensions, I have 1, 2, 3 rows, and 1 column. So this is a 3 by 1, and the same thing is true of the second one. And we want to subtract. So once again, the corresponding elements, um, we just subtract the corresponding elements, but only if the dimensions are the same. And yes, the dimensions are the same, so we're going to end up with another 3 by 1. So for the element that goes in the first row, first column, we would take 5 minus negative 1. For the second row, first column, it would be 7 minus 2. And for the third row, first column, it would be 2 minus 0. So there we have the difference of those two. Now, if um, you have to go in order, so if I switched it and I wanted to take this matrix minus this one, then we're not going to get the same thing. We'd have to switch the order that we do it. We can also multiply 
any matrix times a number and we refer to that when we're working with matrices the number that we multiply so like in this case the 3 is referred to as a scalar in order to do a scalar multiplication it's fairly simple we simply just distribute that 3 to all of the elements in the matrix so our scalar multiplication would give us the matrix 15 21 6. Once again, it is still going to have the same dimensions as the original one. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. We look and we see that both of the matrices, matrices have the same dimensions. So the first one, two rows by three columns. The second one is also a two by three. So when we multiply by our scalar, notice we have a four outside the first one so every one of those six elements in that first matrix has to be multiplied by four and then we add the corresponding element in the second matrix alright so for our first element first row first column we would take four times four so that gives us sixteen and then we would add eleven so we would get twenty seven for this element right here, which is in the first row, second column, we would take the corresponding element. So we need to take 4 times negative 1, so that would be negative 4, plus 5. So that would give us 1. To get this element, we would take the two elements after we multiply it by the scalar of 4, and add those two together. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. Okay, now we'll move down to the second row. So we need 4 times 3, that's 12, plus 1. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 6. And then 4 times 0 is 0, plus negative 2. Okay. So it's not so tough, is it? Let's move on to solving a matrix equation. Okay, so when we solve an equation, then we're looking for the value of the variable. So take a look here. I have a 2 by 2 matrix here. And I want to add to it another 2 by 2 in order to get a 2 by 2. Okay, so if we just look at the corresponding elements, we see in this first one, we have a 5x here, we have a 3 here, and then we have a negative 21. But notice on the left side, we have a big set of parentheses, and we have a 3 on the outside. So if we just take the elements out of the first row, first column, we would have 3 times the quantity, 5x plus 3, and we want that to equal negative 21. Okay, now let's look at the elements in the first row, second column. Alright, so once again, we still have a 3 on the outside. We have a parenthesis, and then we have a negative 2 plus 7, and that should equal then this element here that is also in the first row second column so that is 15 and if we take a look at that there's not a variable in there and if we simplify that negative 2 plus 7 is 5 and 3 times 5 is 15 so there's nothing to solve there okay but we do see that those are equal okay let's go down to the elements in the second row and the first column so I'm looking at these elements here but remember we still have a 3 on the outside and we would have 6 plus negative 5 is equal to 3 well there's not a variable in that one so if I simplify 6 plus negative 5 is 1 3 times 3 is 3 sure enough that's a true statement but I've got nothing to solve so we'll just cross through it now let's take a look at the last elements there. So the elements in the second row, second column, we would have 3 times the quantity, 
negative 4 plus negative y, and we want that to equal negative 24. So in this equation then, I want to solve for y, and in this equation I want to solve for x. And we don't have to use elimination or substitution to do it because we do not have an x and a y in both of them. The first equation just has an x. So you could either distribute the 3 or, because on the other side I have a 21, which is a multiple of 3, I think I'm going to go ahead and divide by the 3. So that's going to leave us 5x plus 3 is equal to negative 7. Subtract 3 from both sides. Divide by 5. And then for the last equation here, once again I see that negative 24 is a multiple of 3, so I'm going to choose to divide by the 3. So I get negative 4 plus negative y is equal to negative 8. So we are going to add 4, which would leave us a negative 4 over on the right side. And then because I have the opposite of y is equal to negative 4, that means y is positive 4. So that's how we solved it then. We found the values for x and y in order to make that a true equation. Now we use matrices um, to help us organize data. So let's take a look at this. We have a local bakery keeps track of their sales and it's shown here. And so you can read through that. Now there's going to be more than one way to organize this, so I'm just going to show you maybe um, a way that I kind of see it. If you see it a little bit differently, the number's in a little different place, that could still be all right as long as the corresponding elements are things that we would actually want to add together. So I see for uh, last month we have in store one, we have rolls, cakes, and pies, and in store two we have the same thing. And then we have last month and this month. So probably what we're going to want to do is take the how much was sold last month and then add it to how much is sold this month, you know, and keep track of it on a month to month. So I'm going to kind of set it up this. Let's write this out. So let's say this first matrix is going to represent the sales that we had last month. And then let's organize it. Let's put store one here. And then right next to it, in the second column, will be store 2. And when I set this up then, I only have two stores, so I know that I'm going to have just two columns. But in those stores, we sold rolls, cakes, and pies. So I'm going to keep those separate, because maybe at some point we just need those separate. Um, that information on those separate things we sold. So store one for the number of rolls then, store one, number of rolls, is our first element that is goes in the first row, first column. So we'll put 650 here. Now I'm just going to continue on down that column because we're in store one. We also sold 220 cakes and 32 pies. Whereas last month in store 2, we sold 540 rolls, 200 cakes, and 30 pies. Okay, So then, let's take that same information. So we want to put the corresponding information in the corresponding elements. So now this is going to represent the sales for this month. I still want to put store 1 in the first column, and then store 2 in the second column. And I want rolls, then cakes, then pies as I go down the, the column. So here I would put 840, and then 250, and then 50. And then for store 2, 800, 250 and 42. So if we added those two together, so think about what information we would have then. So we're going to have another matrix with the same dimensions, so it's going to be a 3 by 2, 
And what would this information in this element of that matrix give us? Well, it would give us the number of rolls sold last month and this month. So then you can add each one of those together. And what would this information give us? The element there in that matrix would tell us the number of cakes sold in store two. Um, the sum of those in store two for the sum of the two months, last month and this month. Okay? So you can see how it makes it kind of a nice way to keep things organized. Let's take a look here and we just want to see if we can evaluate these matrix expressions. So the first one says double the elements in A and then subtract off B. Well, when we're adding and subtracting matrices, we have to have the same dimensions. And matrix A has three rows and two columns. So this one is a three by two. Matrix B is two rows and two columns. And matrix C is three rows and two columns. So it wants us to take A and B and the dimensions don't match up. So this is not possible to do that. Okay. The next one says take half of all of the elements in A plus three times the elements in C. So I compare the dimensions of A and C. Sure enough, they're the same dimensions. So I am going to end up with a matrix with those same dimensions. So it's going to have three rows and two columns. So in order to uh, figure that out, we're going to take this matrix times a half, this matrix over here times three, and then we're going to add the corresponding elements. So half of one is a half, three times zero is zero, a half plus zero is a half. And then we do that for each individual element. So half of two is one, three times negative three is negative nine, one plus negative nine is negative eight. Half, now I'm going to go down to the second row first column. Half of two is one, three times five is fifteen, one plus fifteen is 16. Half of 1 is a half. 3 times 0 is 0. Half plus 0 is a half. For the element in the third row first column, we'd take half of 3, so that's 1 and a half. And we'd take 3 times 2, that is 6. 1 and a half plus 6 is a 7 and 1 half. And then for our last one, half of 5 is 2 and a half. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 and a half is 14 and a half. Okay? And that's all we can do with that. So a matrix expression is going to give us just another matrix. Okay? When we're adding matrices together anyway. Okay, now the next one says find C minus A. So C and A again have the same dimension, so we can do that. So we're going to end up with another 3 by 2. So it says take the element in C, so we want to take 0 minus 1. So that's going to give us negative 1. Okay, let's go across the row then. So we're going to stay in first row, second column. We're going to take C, negative 3, minus 2. So that will give us negative 5. And then we are going to take 5 minus 2. So this will give us 3. And then we're going to take 0 minus 1. So negative 1. 2 minus 3. And last, 4 minus 5. Okay. So there is what the expression C minus A would give us. All right, so hopefully um, that went pretty well for you. So once again, when we're just doing simple things like adding and subtracting, then we need to keep the um, dimensions the same. All right, good job.